A bookend is a theme that appears in the beginning of a text and reappears in the end of the text. The Bible is that kind of book because there is one theme that you see in the beginning of the Bible that repeats itself at the end of the Bible and it is really about this female in the garden who started as woman but in the end of the Bible she's called the bride. In order for us to, as the church of Jesus, receive all that Christ, our bridegroom, has prepared for us, we must understand, we must have a revelation of what the female in the garden missed that was the reason why she fell and all the blessing and authority that was given to her was lost because if we do not understand what was lost we cannot appropriate what was restored if you just know who you are in the spirit you find your spiritual identity it will in turn produce not just spiritual authority but all around authority. Why? Because it is the spiritual that controls the natural. Why is the traffic warden able to stop cars that are coming? Because first, he's plugged into an identity that represents the power of state. So when he stretches his hand, what he's exercising is not power. He's exercising authority on the strengths of an identity that he has put on. You can have power without identity, but you cannot have authority without identity. If he builds his muscles, he will be a powerful person. But having personal power is not enough to take six packs to the main road and say, because I am powerful as a person, I can stop oncoming trailers. He can have power on his own, but if he will have authority to stop things that are bigger than him, he must be putting on a particular identity. When he wears that identity, it doesn't matter if he has six packs or amusement park. It doesn't matter if he's weak or he's strong. The identity that he has found is his greatest key to the authority that he must wield. Are you still there? So what happens is when you sit in a teaching meeting like this and we're emphasizing your spiritual identity, we are dressing you up for a life of authority. Yes, sir. Three things happen when your identity comes to you. Number one, you subscribe to it. Number two, you serve the government that backs that identity. Number three, you stand on your identity of screaming about our identity shouting about our identity but it is empty shouting because what deploys and converts identity to authority is that you first acknowledge it subscribe to it you serve its government then when you stand in the battles or when you appear in the battles of life you stand on it i need you to understand this in the government of god there are three ranks the first rank is the priestly rank the priest is the first ranking officer in God's government. That officer is a secret officer. The strength of his office is in what he does in secret. He is supposed to dress in a certain way that covers his nakedness. So when you dress, but your nakedness is not covered, you have... Mm, the part of your identity that speaks to priesthood has been removed from you covers himself then he covers his actions he covers himself in an effort then he goes to the holy place and hides behind the veil to do his work if everything we do is public there's no priesthood in it there's another rank in the government of god called the rank of the prophet the strength of the prophet is his understanding of the counsel of god a true prophet is first a teacher because he understands by the voice of God, God's counsel, and he can declare it to the degree that God intends it to be communicated. There is a third officer in the government of God. He's called king. He's known by the dimension of faith he has in the one who sent him to do the things 
that he was sent to do. You will never hear of him until God sends him. And you will never see him in places God didn't send him. Because he knows that the kingdom only backs up the words of the ones that it sends. In this threefold government, God hid the type, the type of one of these ranks in the way he built a man. But he hid two in the way he built a woman. You cannot ask somebody to help you if they are not stronger than you. The meaning of help suitable is that there are things that was intended to be given to you that is stored in it. It is for you, but it is not in you. In the man is hidden the proverb of the prophet. But the woman represents both the priest and the king. That's why in the New Testament, we are not called prophet, priest, and king because we are now the bride. We are only called priests and kings. What do I mean when I say the man represents the prophet because the proof that a boy becomes a man is only one his voice he gives out the voice he represents the prophet also his testicles drop that's also an opportunity to give out life but the woman represents two of those three realms because when she grows the things that happens to the woman tells both of priesthood and kingship. How do men become kings? The most powerful way anybody becomes kings is through birth. The, the creature that is built to facilitate birth is who? The Bible closes with we being the bride of Christ. On our way to being the bride of Christ, we'll, we will be first three things. First, we will be the children of God. Then, we will be the sons of God. Then, we will be the servants of God. Then, we will be the bride of Christ. Write it down in that order. We will be children of God. We are all admitted into this kingdom as children of God. Then, we become sons of God. The sons of God are the children of God that are able to use their inheritance, their sons. When inheritance comes to our hand, then our father sends us out to extend his kingdom. That one that is, that son that is sendable is called a servant of God. The child of God is a person. The son of God is a person. The servant of God is a person. But the bride of Christ is not a person. The bride of Christ is a group of people who have been joined one to another like Christ is joined with his church and the woman is joined with the man in marriage. So where is the bride of Christ? The bride of Christ is in any company of children of God that are serving each other. When the bridegroom does for the bride, what the first Adam could not do for his wife, he enables the bride to become what Eve could not become. What could she do that we have now been blessed to do? For one, she didn't know that she was the good God intended to do to mankind. She didn't know that she is a structure God was building. She didn't know that she was made not of dust, but of bone. And her assignment was to structure what God has said. That she failed to know God's word to her. I'm speaking to the bride of Christ right now. What am I saying? If you don't belong to a structure of believers, you see those people that come into service last and leave first. You know what they're saying? I'm happy to be a child of God. I'm happy to be a son of God. I'm happy to be a servant of God, but I don't want to be the bride of Christ. So how do we please God? How does God consider us good? That every one of us has a part in the structure that God is building, the church that God is building. If we cannot find your peace in what God is building, you are not the bride of Christ. Number two, Genesis 3 and verse 13. Did you notice that every time she opened her mouth, she was talking about the serpent? And more in her conversations with the serpent than she had with man, or with God. She only had something to say with or about the serpent. That was her second undoing. Which means that she failed to believe the word of God. She believed more the voice of the serpent than she believed the word of God. Whether from the mouth of God or from the mouth of man. Number three, she did not declare God's word. When the serpent spoke to her, it was her opportunity to declare the word of God. 
So who is the bride of Christ? First, the bride of Christ is the one who believes God's word, who knows God's word, believes God's word, and declares God's word about anything. This is the message. That the biggest lesson to learn from the female of the garden is that we have, all of us, a responsibility to build the body. We are the bone. We are the rib. Until we are building, we are not the bride. A certain prayers will not be answered until we are building. Some prayers will not be necessary because we are building.